Welcome to unofficial Kakarot. Seriously, for real, there are things that just don't make sense. Just look at this case. Parents demanded that I give my sister golden child the $50,000 I saved for my exchange program. The absurd request. I always knew there was a difference in the way my parents treated me and my sister, Julia. While I fought for every little achievement, she was always treated like the golden child of the family, receiving all the support and attention that I never had. This was something I had learned to deal with over the years, although the resentment slowly grew inside me. But that afternoon, when my parents demanded that I give the $50,000 I saved for my exchange program to my sister, it was like a bomb going off. The room seemed to get smaller, and the air became heavy. You're not serious, Mom, I said in disbelief, staring at her. Of course, we're serious, my father replied, with that authoritative tone he always used when he wanted to end arguments. Your sister needs help, and you're in a position to give it to her. That's my money, I exclaimed feeling my face heat up with anger. I saved for years to be able to study abroad, and now you want me to just hand it over to Julia? My mother crossed her arms, impassive. Julia has bigger dreams now. She needs this money to start her business. And you, Ricardo, will have other opportunities to study abroad. What? My voice rose a little, reflecting my indignation. Are you trying to tell me that her dreams are worth more than mine? My father sighed impatiently. No one is saying that. But we're a family. And when someone in the family needs help, we help. It's the right thing to do. I looked at them in disbelief. You've always helped Julia. You've always treated her as if she were more important. And now you're asking me to sacrifice what I've worked so hard to achieve for her. You don't understand, Ricardo. My mother said, her tone more condescending now. Julia has the potential for great things. And you'll have other chances. We can think of another time for your exchange. Anger began to bubble inside me, but I took a deep breath, trying to keep control. That's not fair. You know how much this exchange means to me. And besides, Julia doesn't need my money to start a business. There are other ways for her to get it. Why don't you ask her for that? My mother shook her head. You're so selfish, Ricardo. Your sister has always been the most responsible. She's always thought of others. You need to learn to do the same. Responsible. I laughed in disbelief, but the laugh was bitter. Julia has never had to deal with half the things I have. She's always had it all on her hands. I've always been the one who had to fight for what I wanted, while you gave her everything. My father stepped forward, his face hardening. That's enough. We're not asking. We're ordering. You're going to give this money to your sister. And that's it. The refusal their determination hit me like a blow. It wasn't a request. They were ordering me to give up my dream in favor of Julia. But something inside me refused to give in. No, I said firmly, crossing my arms. I'm not going to give her this money. This is my dream, my opportunity. I worked hard for it. If she wants to start a business, she should work for it, just like I did. The silence in the room was piercing. My mother looked at me as if I had just committed an unforgivable crime. Ricardo, you are being selfish and ungrateful. How can you talk about your own sister like that? How can you ask for something so absurd? I snapped. You're basically telling me that I'm not important. That what I want has no value. Julia, who had been silent until then, finally spoke. Ricardo, I really need this money now. You know how hard I've worked to plan this deal. It's going to be a great opportunity for me and for all of us. It's going to benefit the whole family. I glared at her, trying to control my anger. You always get what you want, don't you, Julia? It's always been that way. But I'm not going to sacrifice what I've fought for for you. Not this time. She seemed surprised by my firmness, and my parents became visibly angrier. You're being stubborn, my father said, his voice deepening. Don't be stupid. This is the last time we're going to talk about this. Then this is the last time you're going to hear it from me, I said, standing up. The answer is no. I grabbed my things and left the house, my heart pounding in my chest. I knew I had made the right decision, but I also knew that things would never be the same again. The aftermath. The next few days were tense. My parents barely spoke to me, and when they did, they were short and cold. I knew they were furious, but so was I, and there was no way I was going to change my mind. One afternoon, while I was in my room, my mother walked in without knocking, her face serious. Do you have any idea what you're doing to this family, Ricardo? 
she asked, crossing her arms. I do, I replied calmly. I'm defending what's mine. She snorted. Your father and I have decided that if you don't give your sister this money, we will no longer help you in any way. No financial support. No support for the exchange program. Nothing. I looked at her, shocked. So, you're disowning me? If it's necessary to teach a lesson, yes. I knew this was their last resort. They wanted to break me. To force me to give in. But this time, I wasn't going to. If this is how it's going to be, I said, then I'd rather be alone than with a family that doesn't care about me. My mother left the room, slamming the door. I sat down on the bed, exhausted. I knew the decision was difficult, but there was no other way. The revelation time passed, and the conflicts with my family became a cold war. I barely saw them, and when I did, it was as if there was an invisible barrier between us. Julia, however, seemed untouched by everything. She continued with her business plans, apparently having already found another way to get the money. It was on one of those silent afternoons, while I was reflecting on everything that had happened, that I received a message from an unknown number. The message was short but disturbing. You don't know what's really going on. I frowned, feeling a chill run down my spine. The intrigue. The mysterious message left me uneasy. What did it mean? I reread the message several times, looking for some clue as to who could have sent it. There was no signature, no detail that would give away the sender. The thought that something deeper was going on began to gnaw at my mind. I ignored the message at first, trying to focus on my preparations for the exchange. I still had to finalize some details, but the shadow of my fight with my parents and the uncertainty of the future haunted me. That night, however, another message arrived. If you knew what Julia did, you would never forgive her. This time, my blood ran cold. Who was sending me these messages? Was it some kind of cruel joke? And most disturbing, what had Julia done? I picked up the phone, considering the possibility of answering, but hesitated. Then I decided to go to her. If there was something I needed to know, I would find out in person. After all, the relationship between us was unsustainable, and perhaps it was time for a definitive conversation. Confrontation with Julia. The next morning, I went to Julia's house. She was with her parents, our parents, and she didn't seem surprised to see me. Her expression was, as always, one of self-confidence, as if she knew the world would always favor her. Ricardo, she said with a false tone of surprise. What are you doing here? We need to talk, I said, entering without waiting for an invitation. Julia shrugged, and we sat down at the kitchen table. The atmosphere between us was heavy, full of old and new resentments. I received some strange messages. I began bluntly. Messages saying you're hiding something from me. That there's something I don't know. For a brief moment, something crossed her face. A glimpse of nervousness. Regret? I couldn't quite place it. Who sent you these messages? She asked, her voice now more tense. I don't know, I replied, leaning back in my chair. But I'm here to find out the truth. If there's something you're not telling me, you better tell me now. She remained silent, her eyes fixed on the table. Finally, after a few seconds, she sighed. Ricardo, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not hiding anything from you. These messages are probably some kind of sick joke. I watched her closely, trying to detect any sign of lying. But Julia had always been an excellent actress. And if she was lying, I couldn't tell. Are you sure? I asked, narrowing my eyes. Because if I find out later that you lied to me, I won't forgive you. Julia fixed me with a cold stare. You've always been suspicious, Ricardo. Maybe the problem is you, not me. I stood up frustrated. There was nothing more to get out of her at that point, but something told me that Julia was hiding more than she was willing to admit. The secret revealed. Days passed, and anonymous messages continued. Now they were more detailed. Julia manipulated our parents from the beginning. She never wanted you to do this exchange because she always needed to be in the spotlight. With each message, a new layer of intrigue was revealed. But the turning point came when I received a message that said, Do you know where the money for her business came from? I had never thought about it. After I refused to give Julia my money, she suddenly found another way to finance her project. It was something that intrigued me. But I was so focused on my anger and frustration with my family that I never investigated further. That afternoon, I made a decision. I went to the bank and asked for a statement of my parents' joint account. 
Even though they had cut off financial support to me, I still had access to some information through old accounts that had not been closed. What I found was shocking. Large amounts of money had been withdrawn from my parents' accounts over the past few months, all of it in Julia's name. But what was most disturbing was discovering that some of the money had come from a loan in my name. My parents had somehow managed to take out a loan using my information without my knowledge. This money went directly to Julia's project. I felt betrayed in a way I never imagined. Not only had they chosen my sister, but they had used me to finance her dreams without even consulting me. The final showdown. I was furious. I went over to my parents' house that night, my chest boiling with anger. They were sitting in the living room, seemingly calm, as if nothing had happened. I know what you did, I said, my voice low, but full of tension. My mother looked at me, confused. What are you talking about? You took out a loan in my name. I continued, pacing in circles. And you used that money to give to Julia. You stole from me. My father's eyes narrowed. That's not how you should talk to your parents, Ricardo. I'll talk however I want. I shouted. You've crossed the line. You always treat me like I'm less than her. And now you're literally stealing from me to support her dreams. This is too much. Julia deserves a chance. My mother replied, trying to sound calm. She's always been the most responsible one. You've always been rebellious. We didn't see any other way. Any other way? I laughed in disbelief. You could have asked at least. But of course, you never considered me enough. I was always second best. My father stood up imposing. You've always been ungrateful, Ricardo. I never knew what it meant to make sacrifices for family. You've never given me a reason to do so, I snapped. Never. You chose Julia from the beginning. But that ends here. My mother seemed to hesitate for the first time with a glimmer of guilt. But my father stood firm. If you want to cut ties with this family, he said coldly, then do it. But you will regret it. The difficult decisions after that night, I knew there was no going back. Cutting ties with my parents was a tough decision, but there was no room for forgiveness or reconciliation. I still had a long way to go to undo the financial damage they had caused. But for the first time, I felt like I was in control of my life. Parents sent me away when I was 15. Now I'm rich and they want me to give them all my money. The Forgotten Childhood Since I was little, I always knew there was something wrong. My parents, Laura and Otavio, were kind and loving to everyone around us, except me. They treated me like a shadow, someone who existed in the background, while my cousins Andre and Felipe were praised as if they were the perfect children they always dream of having. No matter what I did, my effort would never be enough. My cousins were always praised, given gifts and attention that I never received. Every Christmas, every birthday, family events were a bitter reminder that I didn't truly belong there. At 15, the unthinkable happened. My parents, tired of dealing with a son who didn't appreciate them, those were my father's exact words, made the decision to send me away. I was left to fend for myself, with no support, no explanations other than a coldness that I could never understand. Go alive your life, Marcos. We can't support someone who doesn't want to fit into our family anymore, they said. And so, at 15, I found myself alone in the world. With no place to go... I went through extreme hardships. The first few months were the worst. I worked temporary jobs, lived in small apartments, and for a long time survived on the bare minimum. But there was something inside me, a spark of determination that my parents never recognized. I wasn't willing to give in to the fate they had imposed on me. The turning point. Years have passed since that day. I was kicked out of my home. Little by little, I found my way. I started working at a technology company that was still small but had enormous potential. There, I dedicated myself more than I had ever done before, learning everything I could about the industry. My nights were dedicated to studying and my mornings to working. And over time, I was noticed. I moved up in the ranks, made contacts, and eventually found myself with the opportunity to start my own business. With sweat and sacrifice, I built an innovative company and, in a few years, it became a success. At the age of 30, I was rich, very rich. I had built something I had never dreamed of, and for the first time in my life, I felt proud of myself. During all those years, my parents never contacted me. Not a letter, not a phone call. Nothing. They simply erased my existence from their lives. And I never contacted them either. After all, I had found something much more important. 
my independence, the unexpected reunion. One day, while I was in an important meeting, I received an unexpected call. It was from an unknown number. I thought about ignoring it, but something told me that I should answer. Marcos. The voice on the other end sounded familiar, but there was a coldness to it that couldn't be forgotten. Yes, who's this? I asked, trying to identify who it was. It's your father. The words hit me like a punch in the gut. I hadn't heard his voice in over 15 years. I didn't know what to expect. There were so many questions, so much anger and resentment that I had been holding on to for so long. Dad, I said, surprised. What do you want? There was silence on the other end of the line. When he finally spoke, his voice was hesitant. We need to talk, Marcos. I think it's time for you to come home. I laughed, a dry, humorless laugh. Come home? Since when do you consider this home my home? He sighed. Things have changed. We've heard about you. We know you're very successful now. Your mother and I thought that, well, you could help the family. I didn't know whether to laugh or scream in anger. They didn't care about me when I was alone with nothing, but now that I had achieved something, they showed up, expecting me to provide for them. I don't owe you anything, I said firmly. You abandoned me. Why would I do anything for you now? Because we're your family, Marcos, he replied. You owe us gratitude. Gratitude? I hung up the phone without saying anything else. I sat there for a while, trying to process what had just happened. How could they have the audacity to reach out to me now, after everything? But I knew this wouldn't be the last I'd hear from them. The inheritance request. Over the next few days, my parents kept trying to get in touch. Text, calls, even emails. It was as if I suddenly mattered to them. But what shocked me the most was the content of one of the messages. Marcos, you have so much more than we ever dreamed of. We thought it would be fair for you to share your fortune with your cousins and us. You've always been luckier than them, so it's the least you can do. Family is everything, and you owe us that. My cousins, Andre and Felipe. They had always been the center of attention, the children my parents wanted. And now, somehow, they also felt that I had an obligation to support them. My anger grew with each new message. I had worked hard to build everything I had. None of it was easy, and they, who had never helped me in any way, now wanted a part of it as if it were their right. I decided it was time to confront them. I could no longer avoid this confrontation. I needed to make it clear that they should not expect anything from me. The confrontation, it was a cold afternoon when I finally decided to face my parents. I was not willing to let this situation hang over me any longer. The messages kept coming, and each one increased the contempt I felt. Did they really believe they had any right to what I had achieved? The resentment that had been dormant for years now burned inside me. I picked up the phone and, with steady fingers, typed the message. I'm coming to your house. We need to settle this once and for all. The words didn't even come close to reflecting the turmoil inside me. Sending that message was like opening a door to a past that I would have preferred to keep locked. But there was no going back. I knew I needed to face my parents and somehow close this cycle. When I arrived at the old house where I spent the first years of my life, a mix of emotions took over me. It was a simple house in a neighborhood that didn't seem to have changed much. The faded facade and the unkempt garden showed that time had passed there too. When I rang the doorbell, I felt a shiver of nervousness. It was strange to be there after so many years. I wondered what my parents would think when they saw me. Did they already see me as a stranger? The door opened slowly. My mother, with her gray hair and a tired expression, stood before me. Her face looked like a worn-down version of the woman I remembered. But the look of contempt she'd always given me was still there, buried beneath years of indifference. Marcos, she hesitated, as if struggling to find the right words. You came. It seems like I didn't have much of a choice, does it? I replied, my tone harsher than I intended. She stepped aside, signaling for me to come in. The surroundings were familiar, and yet completely foreign. The living room was the same as always, the furniture was old, the pictures of my cousins plastered across the walls, no sign that I'd ever been part of that family. Sitting on the couch was my father. He didn't get up when I walked in, just stared at me with a mixture of disappointment and expectation. You took your time, was all he said. I fought back a roll of my eyes. I was busy working as usual. Working. My father crossed his arms clearly bothered by my tone. You've always been good at running away from your family to work, haven't you, Marcos? Those words hit me like a knife. 
I knew this conversation wouldn't be easy, but still, hearing those accusations so blatantly made me question if there really was any family ties between us. Run away. I gave a bitter laugh. Run away from your family? You kicked me out of the house when I was 15. What did you expect me to do? Live on the streets? I had to fight alone to survive, to build something while you treated my cousins like the perfect sons you always wanted. My mother, still standing, tried to intervene. Marcos, it's not fair for you to blame us all. You've always been different. We just wanted you to fit in. Fit in. My words came out with more force than I expected. I never had a chance. Everything I did was never enough. But Andre and Felipe, they were always the darlings. You gave them everything, and I was always the left out. My father huffed impatiently. They're hard workers, Marcos. They always did what we asked. Hard workers. I laughed again, incredulous. Andre and Felipe are failures, and you know it. They never achieved anything on their own, but you still think you're the perfect children. Meanwhile, you have no idea what I had to go through to get where I am. The silence that followed was sharp. My mother finally sat down next to my father, her eyes focused on the floor, avoiding direct confrontation. That's why we're here, Marcos, she finally said, her voice lower. You have a good life now. You can help your family, make up for everything. Make up for... I repeated the word, incredulous. Make up for what? You abandoned me, and now that I have money, I'm suddenly obligated to help you? And why? Because I got something while you spoiled my useless cousins. My father finally stood, his posture rigid, and he spoke in a voice that seemed to be filled with years of pent-up resentment. Because that's what a son does. Family comes first. Always. No matter what happened in the past, you owe us this. I stared at him in disbelief. The idea that I owed anything to this family that had discarded me when I needed it most seemed absurd. I don't owe you anything, I said, my voice firm. You weren't there for me. You didn't support me. And now you want me to give up everything I've earned? My answer is no. I don't owe you anything, and I won't give you a single cent. My father's face hardened, and I could see the anger building in his eyes. He wasn't used to being contradicted. All his life, he had controlled every aspect of the family, and now seeing his rebellious son refuse his obligation felt like a personal insult. You're going to regret this, Marcos, he growled. One day, you'll need your family, and then it'll be too late. I walked toward the door, not looking back. You were never my family. I learned to fend for myself, and I don't need you now. I closed the door behind me tightly, feeling the weight of that argument follow me as I walked to the car. I knew it wouldn't be easy, but the wound from years of rejection was more raw than I had imagined. The revealing email. A few weeks later, when I thought I would finally have peace, I received an email that made me relive all that anguish. It was from my parents. I opened the email hesitantly, and the content was a mixture of disappointment and bitterness. Marcos, we thought you should know by now. Since you already have a lot of money and don't seem to care about your family, we've decided that your inheritance will go to Andre and Felipe. They need it more than you do. If you ever realize you're wrong and want to come back to us, maybe we can reconsider. Family is everything. I could hardly believe what I was reading. My inheritance. They were talking as if the money was more important than the relationship we never had. It was as if somehow they still felt they had control over me, that they could manipulate me with promises of an inheritance I didn't even want. The revealing email. A few weeks after the tense meeting with my parents, I received an email that seemed like a final manipulative move. The content was direct and cold, reflecting the coldness with which they had treated me throughout my life. It was as if, even now, they were trying to dominate me in one way or another. Subject. Your inheritance. Marcos. After our last conversation, we were deeply disappointed by your attitude. Although you have a lot of money, we have decided that your inheritance will be passed on to Andre and Felipe. They are in a difficult financial situation and need it more than you do. Family is everything. And if you ever realize the error of your ways and want to be part of it again, we can reconsider. However, at this time, there is nothing more to discuss. Sincerely, Mom and Dad, reading these words made me feel a wave of anger. They were basically saying that since I had cut ties with them, any financial resources that might have been mine would be given to my cousins who had never really worked for anything but had always been the darling of the family. I decided not to respond right away. 
I needed time to process this and plan my next move. However, the following days were marked by a growing sense of injustice and indignation. The revelation of the primary. A few days after receiving the email, something unexpected happened. Andre and Felipe showed up at my door. Their faces were a mix of shame and expectation. It was unusual for them to show up without a specific reason, and this only increased my curiosity and uneasiness. Marcos, can we talk? Andre asked, his voice full of hesitation. I invited them in and led them to the living room. The atmosphere was colder than usual, and the tension was palpable. What do you want? I asked bluntly. I've already heard what my parents had to say. Felipe, usually more reserved, took the lead. We know our parents sent you an email. We want to explain. Explain what? I interrupted. Why do you think you have a right to my inheritance? You've never worked for anything. You've always expected everything to come to you on a silver platter. That's not exactly what we meant, Andre began, adjusting himself on the couch. Actually, the situation is more complicated than it seems. I looked at him suspiciously. More complicated? What do you mean? Felipe took a deep breath before speaking. The truth is that our parents have been manipulating the situation for years. They've always used us as a way to control you. They wanted you to feel isolated and inadequate. And why are you telling me this now? I asked, confused. Andre and Felipe exchanged glances, as if they were discussing the best way forward. Then Andre spoke in a firmer voice. Because we're tired of this. We've always been pressured to behave as if we were perfect, when in reality we've never been anything more than pawns in their game. And now, they want you to be the villain while they continue to manipulate everyone. But why tell me this now? I asked, still trying to process the information. Felipe got straight to the point. Because we know they'll never change. And because, despite everything, you still have the chance to do things differently. You can take a stand and end this cycle of control and manipulation. I stayed silent, absorbing the revelation. I never imagined that my cousins were as aware of the family dynamics as I was. It made me question whether my perception of them was really fair or if, in some way, they were also victims of the system. The revenge plan. After talking to Andre and Felipe, I decided I needed to take action. Not only to confront my parents, but to finally free myself from the shadow of manipulation and injustice that seemed to hang over my life. I began to plan how I could expose the truth and end the control my parents had over my life. First, I decided to gather evidence that would show the pattern of manipulation and favoritism they had demonstrated over the years. In addition, I wanted to ensure that my cousins had the chance to show themselves for themselves, without the shadow of an inheritance that was not deserved. It was a difficult task, but I managed to gather documents, emails, and recordings that showed my parents' manipulative behavior. With this in hand, I prepared a presentation that would show the world the truth about the family dynamics. At the same time, I organized a meeting with my parents to explain everything I had discovered. It was a last attempt to confront them and perhaps, in some way, reverse the situation. The final showdown. The day of the meeting arrived, and my parents were about to face what I had kept inside. Tension was in the air, and I could feel my heart racing as I prepared to reveal everything. When my parents arrived, it seemed like they were expecting a discussion, but not a full disclosure of the truth. I sat down at the table with them all the documents and evidence organized. I have something to show you. I began, my voice firm and resolute. You always thought you could control everything and everyone around you, but now it's time to reveal the truth. I hooked up my laptop to the TV and began to show them the documents and emails that proved the manipulation and favoritism. My parents watched Mouth Sagape as I detailed each piece of evidence. You abandoned me, left me to fight alone, and now you want me to share everything I've built with you. When you've never done anything to support me, I stared at them with a mixture of anger and sadness. You manipulated the situation to make me look like the bad guy while favoring my cousins. And now, I'm here to put an end to it. The silence in the room was heavy. My parents were visibly shocked, unable to find words to defend their actions. Andre and Felipe were present, as witnesses to the truth that was finally being revealed. I will take the necessary legal action to ensure that you do not have access to what I have built. I continued. And I will also ensure that my cousins have the chance to prove themselves without the burden of the manipulation that you have placed on us. The new order. With the truth exposed, the family dynamic changed irreversibly. 
My parents tried to reach out later, but I ignored them. It was clear to me that their manipulation and control had been the cause of many of the problems we faced as a family. Andre and Felipe, for their part, struggled to stand out on their own. I supported them in whatever way I could, not to reverse the past, but to help them find their own path. Life went on, and I continued to build the future I always wanted. The experience was painful, but also liberating. Finally, I was free from the shackles of manipulation and injustice that had marked my life for so long. And so, the story of a broken family and an individual fighting for his own truth ended with a promise of a new beginning, where the past no longer could determine the future. Well, at least that's the story so far. What do you think of all this? Want more parts of the story? Click the like button and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any videos. Until the next update and next video. Bye.